Alright guys, welcome back. Today we're looking at the Vok Board Pilot. I think this board is a game changer. This board boasts some pretty impressive specs for a very affordable price. This is one of the cheapest belt boards on the market right now. This board is basically constantly 520 bucks for the standard version and around 600 for the extra range version. I am testing the standard version belt in my review. If you are looking for a cheaper option that can get more range, they have the hub version, which has a little bit more range, a little bit less power, but is a couple bucks cheaper. So what really impressed me about this board is how cheap you can get a belt drive system. It used to be that you'd have to spend around a thousand bucks before you got your first belt drive boards, but now we're seeing them cheaper and cheaper. I really prefer belt drive just because of the wheel switching options. Not being able to switch wheels on hubs suck. I love having that option just to be able to easily take off the wheels and switch them out for bigger or smaller options depending on how you are feeling on the day you arrive. Straight out of the box, I was pretty impressed with what you got. You had a grip tape cleaner, you had a wall hanger, you had your board and charger and a ton of other tools. Sadly, I do not have the unboxing footage. Uh, the file corrupted for that when I was editing this video. The board itself has a very nice feel to it. It has a good quality build. All the trucks and the ESC and battery case, they have a really nice finish on them that just gives them this nice, smooth, and high quality finish. Spec wise, the board is pushing some power. You have a standard 10S battery that pushes around 288 watt hours and you also have dual 1200 watt hour motors which is very impressive for a board in this price range. The board was pretty easy to carry so that's a pretty good thing to consider if you're using this as a commuter. It felt pretty lightweight and ergonomic to carry around. Compared to some boards which are more bulky this is a little bit lighter. So I have the pilot version which is the belt version but you also have an option to get the riot version which is the hub. Uh, the hub version will have a little bit more range because there is less resistance and you also won't have to worry about maintenance as much but you will not have the option to switch out wheels like you do on the belt version and I just kind of prefer the feeling of belt. The power is a little stronger and uh, I kind of like how loud it is. These stock trucks and wheels give a pretty nice feeling, very fluid when it comes to carving and all of that stuff. Also pretty stable at high speed. I did notice straight out of the box the ESC did feel a little lurchy which made me a little scared to go at higher speeds but surprisingly that fixed up the next day and then it was fine. The board was also pretty rattly but now it's fine. The board says it gets around 15 to 20 miles on the charge. I say it gets more around 10 to 12, maybe on hub. I love belt so much because you can go from wheels like these to wheels like these. These are the hydro wheels. I made a review on them a couple weeks back, so go check that out if you're interested in seeing more. I personally love these wheels. I'm gonna go for a little speed test right here. I made sure to tighten up my bearings and I also put on the bigger 110 millimeter clad wheels, which should give me more speed. I'd like to point out the speedometer on the Insta 360 normally lags behind by five kilometers. So just add five kilometers to whatever you see. I know this board was pushing some speed. It felt so much faster than I was actually going. Normally you could feel pretty comfortable going around 40 kilometers an hour, but I was terrified. So I basically pushed up to 52 kilometers an hour, which is way higher than the advertised speed. I did have to make the wheels an extra, what, 20 millimeters, but that easily made the change and gave it so much extra speed. I did lose quite a lot of range and I went down to one bar on the speed test. This is just because they use worse cells on the normal version. Uh, it Then it re-sagged back up to full charge. So I would definitely just give the board a break after going full speed. Since I was pushing it at such high speed for so long, I was a little scared of a cutout, so I didn't really want to fully be maxing it for the entire way. But luckily nothing happened, there was no issues. The ESC did lurch a little bit, and the motors and ESC were very hot after the full speed run. So I wouldn't recommend doing a very long test on this. I would keep it to maybe around half a mile at max speed. Otherwise, you could damage your board a bit. I ended up being able to max this board out at 34 miles an hour, which is absolutely insane. For a board in this price range, I do not expect anything near that. That is a board that's in the $1,000 price range. Obviously, the board won't be able to 
be able to keep that power up for a long time but just for those short spurts that's amazing i love to be able to see those quick speeds i would like to also say the board was way smoother and jittered way less when i put the 110 millimeter wheels on so if you are looking into this board and you have wet roads or rough roads those are a perfect fit they are also basically the largest wheels you could fit on this board without having to remove the belt guard anything above that you're risking scraping on the belt guard there's about a two millimeter gap between that so it gets a little sketchy with all stud and done i think this is a great board if range isn't your primary focus if it is you can always just get an extra battery and the momentum battery swappers that will make it a great board for range and you'll be able to get around 20 on a full charge if you're going pretty quick if you're going pretty slow i do expect a pretty good range all right see you guys next time make sure to like and subscribe